Hello everyone, this is Picks with the Professor. Today we are talking week four of the 2021 college football season. I am your host, Professor Sides. You can follow me on Twitter at Professor Sides. With me today are my co-hosts, Cousin Jared, who went six and four last week to bring his season record to 21 and 12. That is 64%. Hello there, sir, or should I say leader uh, so far in this young season? Oh, thank, thanks. Uh, good to be here again. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I like building this cushion up as the beginning of the season because the uh, the downturn at some point, there's going to be some bad weeks along the way. So definitely glad to be building this cushion while I can. Yeah, you got to store those units up like a squirrel storing nuts up in the winter, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. cold months ahead. So we got we to yeah. build as much of a lead as you can. Also yep. with me is Jack. Jack went one and three last week. His season record is five and seven. Hello to you as well. Good, sir. Professor, your your discussion of my record is a HIPAA violation. Uh, you know, I am I am not that kind of doctor, so I don't but, think I can really comment on that one. But but like like the MC Escher maze that currently serves as my background, it may look like that I have no idea where I am going, and there are some days I might agree with that. But. We will eventually see the method behind the madness. All right. All right. I'm looking forward to it. Uh, my model picks went 18 and 15 last week. So a profitable week for me. Uh, that brings my record to 50 and 48 on the season. As always, the picks are posted and tracked on Twitter and the Google Sheet. All of my picks, including those for baseball and the NFL, have their own Google Sheets. They are also tracked on BetStamp. Links are in the description below. If you enjoy the show, Please like, subscribe, leave a review, rate us, whatever your method of consuming this is. We appreciate all of those things deeply. We're going to kick things off this week with a new segment called The Good, The Bad, and The Best. Cousin Jared, let's start with you. What was good about last week, week three, college football? So the, the best thing for me this college football weekend was uh, – Washington somehow managing to score 52 points, and I still hit the under on their game total. They beat Arkansas State 52 to three. Um, so a very, very impressive win on my part, but honestly, just reassuring uh, the fact that it seems that Washington does have at least a pulse on offense and maybe some offensive coaches who maybe halfway know what they're doing. So that was definitely the number one thing I took away from Saturday. There is something to be said about being right for the wrong reasons. And that was certainly a right for the wrong reason game. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Jack, what was good for you last week in college football? I don't know. Well, I mean, we, we talked about my record. There wasn't much that was good, but when we got to the after dark slate, I went to bed with Boise State up 20 to seven, feeling pretty good about myself. And then everyone just decided to stop playing. I think I, I, I stand by the Boise pick because, you know, we're one called me down instead of actually like getting the, the scoop and score in from Boise State from them actually covering that game and then having a block field to go away from somehow hitting the middle where they won but didn't cover. It was perhaps the best thing for me out of all of that is that I get to continue my cursed streak of being on the wrong side of a Boise State game. <laughs> yeah, That's, you teased that last week, and it's been a long time running now. And it's always something different. This time it was a negated turnover that was still a turnover, but not a touchdown. Yes, it is quite impressive. For me, what's good was the model strength with large spreads. It said lay the points with Michigan, Texas A&M, Iowa, Arkansas, and Texas. Every game that it said lay big points with, it won. It went 5-0 and there. It said take the points. It had nine games that it took the points in large games. It went 5-4 and four there, so not as good, but still profitable. That's 10-4 and four on large spreads, and that propelled me to a profit week. So that was nice to see. Cousin Jerry, we're going to swing back to you now for the bad. Yeah, the bad for me was Toledo. Uh, playing a great game at Notre Dame the week before, and then coming back home and just laying an absolute egg against a Colorado State team that's not very good. I still stand beside that. Again, I've watched way more Colorado State football this year than I ever intended to. Uh, but I was just very taken aback how Toledo looked so good against Notre Dame and then so bad against Colorado State. All right. And Jack, how about you? Uh, Northwestern, Hunter Johnson, what are you doing to me? I want desperately for them to do average yeah the one, that was the, one, the uh, one year they were good i didn't really like follow them that much but then if, if you go to duke as a starting quarterback and 
half of the passes you complete end up also becoming interceptions for the other team. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a fast pass to the bench. And they, and Northwestern still almost came back until their backup quarterback got hurt. And then the third string guy, of course, did what a third string guy will do in a road game. Yes. And that was almost one of the things I talked about as good. It was, it was nice to uh, be on the side of the blue devils on that one. Um, For me, I've got two things. First off, Washington state plus nine and a half goes up 14, nothing looks like the better team. And, and I don't know if I've ever counted a win as early in the games. I was counting that one. They got more than a touchdown. They were up two touchdowns. USC's quarterback gets hurt. And, and their backup quarterback not only is, you know, phenomenal, but apparently he gives the defense magic powers. USC scores 45 straight points. I don't understand it at all. Uh, that turned from easy win to I just ignored the whole close. second half. It wasn't even close. I, I'm, I'm not saying that I told you so on that. But again, worst case scenario for USC, this interim coach comes in and lights it up. So I'm not saying that I said so, but I think I might have said so. Yeah, that was well, that was something. <laughs> I, I think also, I intentionally stayed away because I was like, who the heck knows what's going to happen? I mean, early on, it looked easy and then it was you know freshman quarterback coming in to save the day and like I said give the defense magic powers to apparently also just on Florida State season on the line you know if you're gonna get to a bowl game you have to win some of these coin toss games after you blew a winnable game obviously against Jacksonville State they had they lost three fumbles they threw three picks they were out gained by almost 200 yards there's no way to break this game but, down but, but other, other than, than that they got, they got other than that right other than that how was the play Mrs. Lincoln I mean it was terrible you have to wonder what happened to the week one version of this team that looked so entertaining I, I that was the the time to put up a good effort and that was disastrous um any uh any last words here uh good bad best anything else from anyone to, to add here i think the only other thing i would say is is I was so excited about the Island time game coming back the 1130 central kickoff between San Jose State and Hawaii but see I I feel like if you're going to have the Island time special you've got to bring the points and there were no points in that game 1714 you know Jack alluded to the Duke Northwestern game that was actually more watchable than the San Jose State Hawaii game no fans there Uh, obviously the atmosphere was was pretty dead that was heartbreaking for the island special to come back and we got nothing from it. Mm-hmm. It was really I, sad. I, I apologize to Iowa State. They clearly listened to the podcast and got super offended that I didn't think they could hang points up on UNLV and they <laughs> proved me wrong. They they did it that. Uh, I got nervous as the week went along. You know, we record this early in the week. I was hearing things that that was going to be a home game for Iowa State, that they had bought up a lot of tickets. It was kind of hard to tell uh, in the crowd, the colors are the same between the two teams. So I, I couldn't really tell looking at it. I did not have audio on that game. Um, but I was getting more nervous as the week went on that one, and Iowa State sure let them up. Uh, if this was NFL talk, I would talk about the Ravens. I talked about this on Twitter because that was just a sweet victory. But this is not an NFL podcast, so uh, we're just going to move on from that. But Don't I, hurt I, yourself. Gonna, patting yourself on the back, I am, professor. Oh, I am, oh yeah. I'm, I'm breaking my arm on that one. Uh, moving on to this next week. As usual, all lines are courtesy of Circa Sportsbook. We've got a game Thursday night. Marshall is at Appalachian State. Appalachian State is a seven-point favorite. Uh, Jared, what do you have for us on this one? Yeah, so I think this might be my first Thursday play of the the year, so I'm pretty excited about this. Um, Doing some research on this, and uh, I guess come right out and say it, I'm taking the over on this game, the total over 58. Um, Looking back at some of Marshall's box scores this year, pretty impressive stuff offensively. Um, So they possessed the ball for 19 minutes against Navy, and I apologize, Navy. We've bashed Navy every week on this podcast. I promise you, we love you, Naval Academy. Uh, But this might be the last time I have to kind of throw you in the bus a little bit. Love is a strong word, Jared. Love is a very strong word. Well, I I love the Naval Academy. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. So uh, Marshall possessed the ball for a total of 19 minutes against Navy, still managed to score 49 points, 
put up 460 yards of offense, and that was with three turnovers. Uh, yeah, so uh, very In only 19 minutes, that's insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Marshall offense looked great that game. The next week they ran 100 plays and put up 44 points against an FCS opponent. And then last week against East Carolina, they put up 650 yards, 38 points, uh, even with three turnovers. Um, so clearly the offense is humming at Marshall. Um, App State doesn't necessarily have the reputation for being, you know, a you know a high flying offense, but they're very efficient. And in this game, they're going to get a ton of possessions. So uh, an efficient offense with a lot of possessions, I expect them to put up a bunch of points as well. Uh, so I think this is an uh, easy over on the 58, and I'm locking that in. All right, what you got for us, Jack? Oh dear, where where do I begin with Marshall? Ah. <laughs> uh, it's hard to argue the points that Jared just made. Like, I, I'm not sure, especially with, you know, Thursday games. Um, it's always been the case of Professor and I've always enjoyed some action every now and then. And we're starting to get into these games where the Thursday games are going to be particularly interesting. And those are a lot of times are even on like Tuesdays and Wednesdays. It gets really wild. On those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, 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 th- but Thursdays are no strangers for just being those crazy types of games either. Like I would, I am very disinclined to make a pick for a Thursday game particularly at this stage in the season, but I, and I'm not going to be so bold as to pick the over, but I certainly see where Jared's coming from on that. (laughs) Right. Um, Appalachian state, I have them as a nine and a half point favorite. So I'm laying the seven with them. I would prefer if it's under seven, but seven is still a solid number to lay there. So official model pick there's Appalachian state minus seven for me. Marshall broke my heart last week. They uh, had the cover lined up and then lost uh, to East Carolina. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm, I'm hoping some of that carries over. I have no idea if it will or not, just strictly from a number standpoint, Appalachian State is a much better team and at home. So I think this is a nice, easy uh, 10 point win for them. Moving on to Friday, there are three games that the model has a play on for Friday. The first of which is Middle Tennessee State is getting a field goal at Charlotte. Uh, Cousin Jerry, do you have anything for us on this one? I like taking points. You like taking points, <laughs> Jack. What about you? Even if just three points. Even if it's three, every 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 free point. Man game, cannot but, live yeah. by field goals alone. I, some teams do try though. <laughs> yes. I I mean, ha- have fun, guys. Yeah, this is a game that's probably not going to be watched much, but I'm taking the three points of Middle Tennessee State, so that's an official pick for me. I have them as a one and a half point favorite at Charlotte. Charlotte is not a good team. We've talked about this in the past. Middle Tennessee State, as Jared made the joke of last week, middling, but a middling team, I think, can go on the road and get this uh, W at a much worse team, according to the model. Uh, next up, a game that might actually be worth watching, Wake Forest at Virginia. Virginia is a four-point favorite. Uh, anything for us there, Jared? I think Virginia is the better team, uh, but I get a little bit concerned when I see what the play-action passing game for North Carolina did uh, to them last week. Uh, that was a play that did not cover for me. Um, I think Wake Forest has an equally um, as effective play-action game, so as much as I want to take Virginia here, I'm just going to stay away from this one. Yeah, and, and, and four is a scary number on that, right? Because if, if it's a field goal game and you lay the points, you're on the wrong side of that. Right. And I mean, I'm not convinced Wake is good, but I'm I'm also not convinced Virginia's much better. That could easily be a game that goes either way. All right, so my model says Virginia by six and a half. So I'm laying the four points. I think this is a seven to 10 point win for them. Uh, Wake Forest, I just don't think has much depth. They've already had a couple of injuries. Uh, I, I'm going back to the old Virginia. They did not do us well last week. So I'm hoping they can get it turned around here for us on a Friday night. And then the last Friday game here that I have a play on, Liberty at Syracuse. Liberty is a six and a half point favorite. Anything for us there, Jared? I always feel like Liberty gets a little bit too much respect in these games. Uh, no play for me here, but I always put the lines a little bit too much in Liberty's favor. All right, Jack. And, and Syracuse is one of those power five teams you forget is a power five team. Absolutely. <laughs> like, I, I don't know if that's good or bad. <laughs> I, I, it, we, we record this. I'm on Eastern time and it's later at night. I had a Syracuse stat that I saw over the weekend that I always thought was incredible regarding their football futility. I cannot remember what it was, but the fact that it exists does not speak well for Syracuse. Nevertheless, I agree with Jared. I'm not sure Liberty is the kind of team that should be getting close to a touchdown anywhere, especially at a power five team. You mean giving? 
Yep. That's what I meant. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. I, I agree. This line was uh, Liberty minus seven. Obviously, if you can get Syracuse plus seven, that is a great play. I still love it at plus six and a half. My model makes this a one and a half point Liberty advantage. So I have Liberty as the better team, even on the road, but not by this many points um, at Syracuse. That just seems like way too many. So that's an official pick for me there. So to recap, before we get into our main games that we're going to talk about here, uh, I have Appalachian State minus seven on Thursday. Jared's taking the over. I have Middle Tennessee State plus three on Friday at Charlotte. Virginia minus four against Wake Forest. And then Syracuse plus six and a half against Liberty. And that's going to lead us into our main discussion. We have six games to dive into on Saturday. The first one is one of the big games. This is a big noon Saturday on Fox. Notre Dame is getting six points versus Wisconsin. This game is in Chicago. I'm sure there will be some shenanigans with bodies of water turning green because of the Irish fans over there. This one should be a fun one. Uh, Cousin Jared, I'm going to let you start us off on this game. So before I knew what the line was on this game, I kind of told myself six was the number. I kind of told myself if either team was getting six points here, I was going to take it. And, you know, as I was uh, prepping for the podcast and everything, a lot of the places I was seeing had Notre Dame getting five and a half points. And then to my surprise, whenever you pull the numbers, uh, the official numbers that we use, Notre Dame was getting six points. And I said, hey, this was the number that I had landed at. I'm getting my six points from Notre Dame here. And then I realized that I can't bring myself to do it. And oh, I, come on. And I don't think that it's a Notre Dame thing. I think if Wisconsin was getting six points, I think I would feel the exact same way about them as well. I'm not sure that we've heard more from any team this year, um, you know, more than we have Notre Dame. So with I watched just about every snap of the Florida State game, prime time on Labor Day, um, you know, all of the, the drama around the Toledo game and only being available on Peacock and then the game being so close, everybody ha- basically having to watch it on Twitter. And, and then you signing know, up for subscriptions, you know, in the third quarter. Yeah. Yeah. And then last week with the drum and Purdue, all of the extracurricular stuff that was going on, I feel like I've heard and watched a lot of Purdue this year, but I don't feel like I know anything about Purdue. So I, uh, excuse me, Notre Dame. So I, I just, can't easy mistake yeah 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 exactly the same um so i just don't feel like i can get there with notre dame uh, six points isn't enough like i said i would be the same thing if wisconsin was getting six points i just don't think that i feel good enough about either team right now to make a pick here all right jack i forgot this game was in chicago which makes me think that this line makes even less sense <laughs> i thought this game was in wisconsin i was like okay six I don't like it. I'm still going to take Notre Dame, but I think I can understand it. If this game's in Chicago, I do not understand this at all. I mean, I am not going so far as to say that Notre Dame is good. Um, I'm not even promising that Notre Dame will win. Um, But how soon we forget that Penn State Wisconsin game that I made my son sit through on week one. I'm not. This seems like one of those games where points are going to come at a premium and not necessarily because of good defense. I I think there's a chance that Notre Dame is actually the better team here. So I'm just going to make an official pick and take the points of Notre Dame and hope that it's close. All right. I like where your head's at there. The model makes us a three point game. So I too am taking the points with Notre Dame. So that's Jack and I both taking Notre Dame plus six. Wisconsin is loved by the analytics community for the most part. I don't understand why. I am glad that my model does not like them. I didn't code that in specifically, but I like that at least not just the eye test, which it do, the model the, it doesn't always, it's not supposed to. It's supposed to right. align at what 80% of the time, I guess. I'm glad this is one of those 80% of the time. Wisconsin has a lot of talent, but they really just struggle to get points. They struggle. Um, I, I think they're efficient, but sometimes efficiency doesn't actually correlate one-to-one with success. And so I just, and they're good, absolutely. And I have them yeah, as three points better than Notre Dame. I just don't think they are this good to be almost a touchdown favorite. They, they, they moved the ball well against Penn State, but they had so many unforced errors. <laughs> right. And Notre Dame actually looks a little bit, is a little bit better than they've looked. They've outgained their opponents by a much bigger margin than the score would suggest. So I, I think that Notre Dame is, 
um, and not getting enough credit because of the results on the scoreboard, but they actually have better underlying metrics. So again, Wisconsin, a better team. I think this is a field goal game either way. I, my, again, my math says Wisconsin by three. That means Notre Dame plus six is a winner. So that's where I'm at with my official pick on Notre Dame. Next up, we have Missouri at Boston College. Missouri is a short two-point road favorite. Jared, what do you have for us? This was the line that stunk the most to me and uh, very surprised whenever I saw what the model initially thought about this game. Um, so I think a lot of what you think about Missouri is kind of depends on what you think about Kentucky. They played Kentucky a couple of weeks ago. Me personally, I'm pretty high on Kentucky. I'm higher on Kentucky than most. I think they have a really good offense this year, which has definitely not uh, been the MO for Kentucky the past few years. And the thing is, in that Kentucky game, Missouri was able to go basically shot for shot with, with Kentucky, kind of up and down the field. Um, I, I picked Kentucky that week. I laid five and a half points, and I was nervous the entire time. Uh, Kentucky ended up winning by seven, uh, but it was a really good game. And my thought process was, Kentucky is orders of magnitude better than Boston College on offense. Uh, you know, Boston College doesn't have a Wandale Robinson. They don't have a Chris Rodriguez. They don't have all of these skill guys that Kentucky has. And defensively, I think maybe Boston College has a schematic advantage, but the, the players at Kentucky definitely better than the players at, at Boston College. So I was thinking this might be a pick em, maybe similar to what the line is now. I, I would have thought before, maybe Missouri favored by two. And that was before Boston College's starting quarterback got hurt. And he's out for at least a few more weeks. Boston College beat Temple this past week. They won 28 to three, seems fine they took care of business uh, we've ragged remind, on temple before we have ragged on temple before and that was leads perfectly to my next point though the problem is temple isn't very good and the backup quarterback for boston college had 99 yards of total offense the team as a whole it's only put up yeah the team as a whole only put up 221 yards of offense also obviously <laughs> yeah they didn't need to do much against temple but this this wasn't like a we played really well the first half, got out to a lead, pulled out all the starters. This was, couldn't really do much, but we still won by, you know, 18 points because Temple's not very good. So to me, this is an easy pick. I am officially locking it in here, laying the two points with Missouri. I think this is an easy win. I don't see how Boston College keeps up on offense. Uh, I, I think that this is going to be an easy Missouri win. All right, Jack. Not, not too much to add on Jared's analysis. I'm not going to make the pick, but I will say I, I'm guessing it's not going to be two for long. That's, yeah, that's very possible. And Jared, you kind of tease something that we'll uh, touch on a, in a later segment there about Kentucky. We do have some disagreements on that. Uh, but as you mentioned, the model did like Boston College. That is before you account for the backup quarterback. I don't have good metrics in order to account for that for this week. So it's an official no play for me. I'm not even posting what the model says on the spreadsheet simply because we know that number is not accurate with the backup quarterback. I had talked about this in a previous podcast. This is one of those situations where when the model says there's a huge edge one way, I have to stop and look into it and say, is there something I missed? Sure enough, it's backup quarterback for Boston College, something that I hadn't thought about because I didn't want to play them last week at all. Um, seeing that, it, it's just it's just one of those things where, again, I know the model's off. I, I don't I didn't put anything into account for that. We can make all sorts of random assumptions about just how good the backup quarterback is. By doing that, then, of course, you, you make a number on this game. And it's just something that I'm not going to dabble in. So I'm staying away from it. Um, I am uh, I'm sad that Boston College's full-time quarterback is not in there because I think this would be a, a much more exciting game. But as is, uh, I'm, I'm laying off of it because of that um, uh, you know, kind of wrench in the system there when you, when you, when you throw backup quarterbacks in the, in, in the equation. Next up, we have Kansas State is getting six and a half points at Oklahoma State. Uh, Jared, what do you have for us here? I would like to cede the floor to Jack here, and I want to get his hard-hitting analysis on his Oklahoma State Cowboys. Yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been waiting for this one, all right? So, uh, so <laughs> the floor is yours, Jack. Uh, let's, let's see what you have to say here about your uh, How happy here. should I be about the Boise State win? How happy should I be about the Tulsa win? How happy should I be about that six-point Missouri State win? 
you know, you can't take them away from the yeah, win-loss no, column. Th- this reminds me of like a few years ago. I think I can't remember the exact year, but Oklahoma State started like 10 and 0, but it was a very shaky 10 and 0. <laughs> um, you-, you might see some of the makings of that. Um, Oklahoma State has some problems of their own going into this game. Um, their be- their best corner for, for safety uh, is out for the year. So there's some there's some injuries on defense. There have been some injuries on offense the entire year, but you're you're starting to get some clarity as to who the role players are going to be on that offense. You have Warren coming out as the running back, running all over Boise, which is something that the Cowboys hadn't been able to do at home in two games. So you might see a little bit more of that this year. Some receivers are hopefully coming back from injury. Um, weird things have happened in the last couple of decades when K State comes to town. Um, it's almost always a nail biter. Um, despite all of that, I'm not going to make a pick on like the spread. Um, I'm actually going to take the over on this one. Um, reason being o- Oklahoma state's offense has looked pretty anemic so far. And so the over under is only set at 46 that I saw. It's a really um, low number, especially yeah. for a big 12 game. Yeah. Especially for a, a, a traditionally high scoring Oklahoma state, Kansas state type game. Um, right. I think with the consistency you'll start to see with a defined position at running back for Oklahoma state, th- there's, there's the chance for this game to get all the way up into the fifties. I mean, that sounds like a barn burner. <laughs> so that's all what right. I'm hoping for. All right. So Jack there is on the over 46. I am taking the six and a half points with Kansas state. My model makes us a two point game. That says that Kansas State's better than Oklahoma State because I'm giving two and a half points for uh, home field here. For can, can you State. can you argue that right now? I, I can't argue either side. I don't know which team is better. I think they're close. Kansas State has been surprisingly good. They just demolished Stanford, who I thought wasn't good, and then turns out Stanford might actually be okay. But what does that mean? It was week one. I, I don't really know. Then Kansas State looked pretty lackluster against uh, Southern Illinois, but then gets back on track last week. So I, I, I think they're okay, I guess. They're better than I maybe thought. Oklahoma State, Jack, as you alluded to, also has had some struggles. I don't know what to make of either one of these teams. I'm getting six and a half points. That seems like a win. Obviously, you'd like seven. But in this game, it should be close. A total of 46 even if it gets into the fifties means we could easily see some sort of 28 to 24 yeah. type game, which gets us to the window if, getting six and a half points. If this gets into a foot race professor, I, I think, I think those points are money. Right. So uh, yeah, I think uh, there's a lot of value here on Kansas state with the six and a half points. That's what I'm taking officially there. Next one is another game of interest that you might turn into at least for the first half until uh, we'll see what happens as as the game moves along. Tennessee at Florida. Florida is a 20 point favorite. Uh, Jared, what do you have for us there? So was anybody else more impressed with Florida Saturday than maybe they were disappointed about Alabama? Because that was more my takeaway. I'm, I'm much more impressed with Florida than, than I thought I was going to be. Do you feel the same way? Same I here. think that, I think that Alabama was really looking ahead to their opponent this week. We'll talk about that one later. I mean, that's just I, two cents. Th- that, that's possible, but I mean, watching that game, it sure looked like Florida punched them in the mouth until the very end where they decided, Hey, for this two point conversion, let's have you guys run the ball into the end zone together. Yeah. Yeah. Two is stronger than one. Yeah. So, something yeah. like that. Yeah. So, Except when it's the option and you're supposed to go in opposite directions. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No exactly. deception when you stay in the same spot. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, I'm impressed with Florida. If, if to me, if they're going to score 29 points against Alabama, how many points are they going to put up against Tennessee? So that's the number one thing. <laughs> well, so I, I think it's probably going to be a little bit more than that. Um, so the other thing is Tennessee horribly inefficient on offense but they play so fast like melt the skin off your face fast and this was a hallmark of Josh Heupel's teams um in Central Florida they just went as fast as humanly possible and and I'll add it inefficient but then occasionally bust like an 80 yard play out of nowhere and boom there's six points Yes, it, it almost doesn't matter how inefficient they are. They just run so many plays that they're eventually going to score some points. So I think this line is way too low. I, I think they're easily going to go uh, blow past this number. So my official pick on this game is I'm taking the over 62. 
Well, I would be, I would love to be so inefficient on offense that you're averaging 43 points a game. <laughs> there are some bad teams on that schedule. They, they played uh, Bowling yeah. Green to start the season. They did. They did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and Tennessee Tech last week or something like that. So yeah, artificially yeah. inflated for sure. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. But better to be artificially inflated than not inflated at all because that's true. I've, I've, and... I've been watching some bad offenses in my land recently. Well, no and, matter and... no matter the quality of the, the opponent. <laughs> yes, and uh, Bill Connolly's talked about this on Twitter. Talked about how the spread between the FCS and FBS teams is smaller than ever this year. And he's talked about you know mm. he, he does FCS rankings. I don't dabble into that. He's talked about what would happen if you use more of what should happen this year versus what we historically know about the gap between the two, um, the two divisions, I guess you'd call them. Uh, did the spring season affect that? Whatever. We've seen a lot of FCS teams look really good against FBS teams. And is that because of the spring season is the gap narrowing or what it is, but you know, it's kind of to your point, it is better to be artificially inflated because there are a lot of FBS teams who have barely won or even lost hello, Florida state, right. Two FCS opponents. So uh, it, it could be worse, right? Yeah, it could absolutely be worse. <laughs> Jack, you have any, any uh, anything else on this game? Not, not apart from what we just talked about. G- okay. Good luck, Jared. Yes, I, I, Jared, I agree with what you're saying there. I think there will be a lot of points here. Uh, just like you said, if, if they could put up you know, almost 30 against Alabama, they will score in Tennessee. I think Tennessee will, will score as well. I think it'll be a track meet. I am taking the 20 points with Tennessee. I make this 14. Mm-hmm. I think that Florida's pretty good. I've moved them. Uh, they're you know, top 10 uh, in my rankings. So I, I, it, this is no disrespect to Florida whatsoever. It is just the fact that I think that this number is inflated because of what they did last week. Um, that, that, that doesn't mean that Florida isn't good. It's just, I think everyone's saying, oh, they almost beat Alabama, which is impressive, but that doesn't necessarily mean now that they are at the tier that they should be 20 points um, favored, uh, favored by 20 points over Tennessee. So I think it's just too many points. So a lot of value here. Um, again, I think Florida wins this by two touchdowns. I think this is one of those games where Florida jumps out uh, maybe to a 14, a lead, and then it becomes touchdown ping pong and they just go 14, seven, 21, seven, that sort of thing. And they just back and forth, um, Florida wins by 14 and we get the cover at plus 20. Speaking of disappointing teams, we've got Clemson on deck at North Carolina State. Clemson is only a 10-point favorite. I I didn't go back and look to see what this line would have been at the start of the season, but I have to imagine it would have been closer to 17, even though it's at NC State. People coming into the year talking about how Clemson was going to be, you know, 98% likely to win every game on their schedule this year, with the exception of the Georgia game. And now you look at this, and this number is inching closer to single digits, which is just sh- a shocking turn of events, given what's happened in the last month. Uh, but I'll let you carry on from there, Jared. Where is your head at? So uh, official play for me here, I am taking the 10 points with NC State. Um, I assume I'm speaking for all of us. We have lots of concerns about Clemson's offense at this point, yes? Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I thought so. And I think the, the bigger thing for me, you can kind of obviously like you can excuse week one. I mean, scoring three points against Georgia. I mean, that's, you know, Georgia's phenomenal. And Georgia's, can, Georgia's inching closer to number one in my rankings. They're a very good team. Yeah. Very good team. So, okay. Let's just say that's understandable. Not the best performance the following week for Clemson against an FCS opponent, but I can forgive that as well. Um, I mean, you've got a team that, came off that big game against Georgia, easy letdown spot, you know, that doesn't bother me. They, they won the game handily. This game against Georgia Tech, I think, raises all sorts of red flags. Georgia Tech gave up 22 points to Northern Illinois um, at the beginning of the season, and the fact that you were only able to get, only able to get 14, um, ah, man, I, I think there's a problem. And I, I like what the model does. You mentioned a few weeks ago how the model doesn't overreact. I'm not sure that the model is dinging Clemson enough here for how poorly their offense has has played. But maybe the most important thing is I think this game gave everybody else in the ACC hope because like I kind of alluded to, I think you could write off the Georgia game. I think you could write off an FCS game, but I think every ACC team is sitting there now saying, hey, we have a chance. This team is very, this Clemson team is very good, but I think we have a chance. And so I think there might be value here for a couple of weeks until Clemson figures figures it out. I think they will figure it out offensively at some point, but I'm rolling the dice and saying it's not going to be this week. Uh, I just don't know if they can score enough points to to cover 10. So I'm officially taking NC State plus the 10 points. All right, Jack, what do you got for us? I mean, they're not on pace and 
games against teams with a pulse to score 10. So <laughs> if you can't score 10, you're not going to cover 10. Yeah. Uh, I'm interested in your thoughts on this, Jared. To, to what degree should we give Clemson a little bit of a, not so much of a pass, just like a, okay, part of this is explainable from the lightning delay that happened against Georgia Tech? No. No? I think, I, well, I think if if the lightning delay happened in the first quarter, I think that's excusable. But the lightning delay happened basically at the half. I mean, the first half was also pathetic. So sure, maybe right off some of the second half, but the first half was just as bad. Yeah, yeah, that's why I'm saying not not a pass because, you yeah. know, we, you still have to deal with an, a, a whole half of mother nature averted <laughs> bad football against Georgia Tech. Well, the, the first and the first thing that comes to my mind there is Boise State UCF that first Thursday night of the season where they were delayed for like two hours. And mm -hmm. I, I I had the under in that game and I was sweating bullets the whole time. I had <laughs> didn't think there was a chance yeah. they were going to hit the under with how they both came out on fire. Um, so mm -hmm. I know, you know, you, you can't make direct comparisons, but I, I don't think that's a that's a good excuse. Me neither. But <laughs> <laughs> I, I, what, what can you say about Clemson at this point? Like this is everyone's, I agree. This is not the team we thought we were going to get. I would actually not be too surprised if they find a way to lose this one. It's definitely on the table, which is shocking to think about. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Um. So anything else, Jack? No, no pick for me. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm also taking the 10 points. Uh, man, this one is really interesting. To me, this is a fight between how much do you believe the preseason projections? How much do you believe in recruiting? How much do you believe in the system versus how much do you believe in the three games that we've seen so far? And it's not even eyes versus metrics because the metrics for these three games are bad. So it's, it's not even a, a math nerd versus – it's not even one of those type of yeah. battles. It's just a battle of how much do you weight what we know Clemson – is slash can be versus what they've done in artists and engineers agree clemson has not been good <laughs> right exactly they have yeah. not been good we're at an interesting point in the model we're really shifting now between um, the preseason projections the recruiting the returning performance the um what we know coaches do with certain types of players a lot of that is baked in from the start of the season and it slowly fades out by the time we get to this point in the season we're starting to already fade it out it's gonna it's it's two-thirds of uh, you know one-third kind of split now 50 50 heading forward it's one of those where it just slowly fades out you know by the time we hit week you know, week seven, week eight, it's basically just everything that's happened this season. But we're, we're at an interesting point now where the the, 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 the the balance is starting to shift. So my model is starting to penalize Clemson. If, if you saw, I tweeted uh, my my current rankings, Clemson's dropped another spot. And now they're into that big bunch of, they're at the top of them, but they're at that big bunch of teams in the middle that's not in that clear top tier. If they have another bad performance like that, they're going to completely drop out of the top 10 because it's one of those things where my model is starting to ding them, but it, it just it doesn't know how much to ding them just yet. They're such an interesting team. Uh, I, I think that there's still a lot of people, at least this part of the week, who've put their money on Clemson saying Clemson is still really good. And I'm not saying they aren't. I just think you've got to penalize them more for where they are yeah. at now. Yep. I'm like you, Jared. I think they will figure it out. I don't think they figured it out yet. NC State at home is sometimes a tough place to play, especially yeah. when they have, like you said, when they have hope and they have belief. The student section there ought to be pretty fired up with a chance mm -hmm. to, to get a signature win right here. Uh, this, this, Jack, you know, you and I were at Baylor when they were, you know, uh, kind of good, but not great that first year. On the way there, up. On the way up. And this feels like that same sort of thing when, when, Oklahoma came to town that year. RG3 was there. We won that game. The crowd was just, just going wild. And this feels like that same sort of thing. Like, Hey, we have a chance to win this game. And like you said, you had the hope yeah. they, they got a little bit of that. And uh, so there's a decent chance. They keep this thing close. There's a chance they win this game, which is crazy to think about. So I like taking 10 points uh, as well. I've got it as an eight point game. So I've got, you know, Clemson wins by a touchdown, but, but plus 10 gets us to the window there. Yeah. yeah Let's remember I this next week when Clemson wins by 40. Hey, if they do, we will, we will recap it in the well, intro segment. It, it, and that goes perfectly with what I was going to say is they've just been so bad offensively. It's not like we're just missing one or two things here or there. There's just so many things going wrong that I just can't see them getting it turned around in one week. I think yeah. this is going to be like a few week process at least to get it turned around. Yeah, I agree. And, and you know, who knows where we'll be. They, their season can diverge in two completely different directions. I feel like in a month we could be talking about 
Clemson's really hitting in all cylinders. They're back up to that team we thought they were going to be with our clear top four team. There's a chance they just never figure out. It happens. There are times when these teams have these just high preseason expectations, great coach, great system, great players, and it just never figures itself out. There's a chance in the month we're just talking about how it never clicks. It, it can really go one of two ways. They're one of the most high variance teams going forward that I can think of. So it'll be really interesting to watch how they progress this next month. We're going to close out with another game that you are going to want to watch. Really interesting game here. Texas A&M against Arkansas. This one in Arlington again. Uh, Jared, as a Texas A&M alum, I'm sure you have a lot to yeah. say about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So normally I take a bunch of notes, do a bunch of research. Um, I wrote down nothing for this. So when this goes off the rails, this is 100% my fault. Um, so let's play a game of uh, what I think and what I know, except we're not going to play anything that I think. I'm just going to tell you what I know. So I know this Very game. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I know. I don't like this game. <laughs> yeah. I, I know this game has been very close for the past decade. Somehow Arkansas hasn't won one, I don't think, but it has been very close. Arkansas has covered many, many times. It's always some big numbers too. Yeah. Some, Uh, you know, plus 28s or whatever, and they keep it close and everyone's. Yes, yes, exactly. It's always a close game. I also know Texas A&M has a very good defense. I mean, it is really good. Probably the best defense they've had since I've been following the school. I also know that A&M has a question mark a quarterback at the very least an unknown he did not look good against Colorado he looked better in the fourth quarter he looked good against New Mexico but it's New Mexico so you know what does that really say here's the other thing that I know and I don't think is getting enough um, publicity for people that might be prognosticating the game the Texas A&M offensive line has not been able to open up any holes for for the running game this year we got rushing yards against New Mexico. It's New Mexico. We got some rushing yards against Kent State, but there weren't any really big chunk plays. It wasn't consistently picking up five or six yards. It was two yards here, three yards there, two yards there. Those last two things that I say about a question market quarterback and, uh, you know, an inability to open up holes in the running game reminds me a lot of the things that I might have said about Texas. I was, I was game. just thinking that absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that, 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 it sounds like what Arkansas did to frustrate Texas right there. Yeah, yeah. So I, ain't, this is going to be a completely different game. a ms defense is much better than Texas's defense, but it's going to be low scoring. I think that those points that you're getting here with Arkansas are going to be like gold. So I am official play for me. I'm going to take the five and a half points with Arkansas here. There's nothing right. quite like rooting against your own team well, I mean, in an he's official rooting, capacity. He's, he's rooting for him to win by three, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> if it goes to overtime, he'll be per, he'll be he'll be and, really happy. He and and let happy let the record stressed. show. <laughs> let the record show. I believe I did text both of you and say I can't mm-hmm. wait for the Arkansas line to open yeah. between four and seven, and yeah. I was going to take it between four and seven. So uh, yeah, I and here we are. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. For for the record, A and M's won nine straight. Um, Arkansas's last one was in 2011. That feels right. Yeah. And there there were three overtime games in that nine game stretch. And yeah, AM won all. The 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 fact that Arkansas has not won one of these games is unbelievable. Yeah. But they I don't I have a clue what the against the spread record is, but I'm guessing it's pretty good because most yeah. of those games AM was going in the better team. There were a couple of decent yes. Arkansas teams in that, but there were a lot of bad Arkansas teams. Yep. And there were some you know, at minimum in those games, I feel like it would have been a pass. I see, I mean, I see six, all of them. Yeah, I see six ranked AM teams in this yeah. stretch. Yeah. And I'm knowing what I know about Arkansas, certainly not six ranked Arkansas no. teams yeah. in those matchups. Yeah. Uh, it all depends on how good you think Texas is, right? Because if, <laughs> as an AM fan, Jared, is Texas good? <laughs> <laughs> Not biased I, at all. I also, I, I also took Arkansas in that game. So, I mean, if that tells you anything. Yeah, because if, if you do not think Texas is good, Arkansas has done nothing. Now, because they, they played two other, I think, nobodies. They, yeah. They, beat, they, beat, they struggled to put away Rice, but they did finally run away from them in the second half. Mm-hmm. And then they played, I think, Georgia Southern. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I don't have anything to disagree with Jared. Just so if, if, if Arkansas loses this game, let, let's start hammering Texas later. 
Yeah, you pick it up in the in the in the, in the middle of uh, Saturday, right? All, all yeah. three betting based on what happens. Uh, officially, a no play for me. I've got the model making this a six point game. I was on Arkansas last week. It was an easy winner. I was on Texas A and M last week. It was an easy winner. The model likes both of these teams. Um, it's got Arkansas climbing on up. Um, it's got it's it's like Texas A and M all year. It's got them up there as well. I think these are two really good teams. Uh, Texas A and M is a better team. So just to stay away from me, Jared, you brought up a good point about comparing it to the Texas game. I think it's a pretty solid comparison. The difference is that Texas has some better skill players, I think, on the offensive side of the ball that Arkansas really frustrated and shut down, which doesn't bode well for AM's offense in this game. Mm-hmm. Um, now, I think that, like you said, AM is a better defense. So again, it, it, it just a thought again my model has nothing to do with totals but i have a thought on the under on that just because of that uh right there if, if you're listening out there maybe something to kind of dive down that rabbit hole um but two really good teams should be a great game but a, a pass for me on that one and that wraps up the six games we're going to deep dive we're going to go into rapid fire uh i'm calling this rapid fire one liners we're going to go in a round table each person's going to get one line, one sentence, whatever you want on this game. Some of these are official picks from different people. We'll highlight those. Uh, Some of these, I'm sure the one liner will be, why is this scheme even happening? Um, There are some random ones out here. Hey, you you play numbers, not teams, right? So some of these numbers are good. And the model says that they they like them, but they aren't games you necessarily want to watch. So uh, we're going to go through these. Starting off at the top, Kentucky is a five-point favorite at South Carolina. Jared, what you got? South Carolina can't score enough points to keep this one close. Uh, an official play for me on this one, I'm laying to five points with Kentucky. All right, Jack. We're on our way to a continuing Kentucky train. <laughs> I don't even know they're, what that means. They're about to be 4-0, and oh, I think. Ah, uh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, okay. Uh, official pick from me South Carolina plus five so Jared and I differ on this I make this a one and a half point game I think it stays close next up Toledo is a four and a half point favorite at Ball State Jared what you got for some action here if either of you are betting on Toledo God speak to you good luck to the boys from Muncie I will be way 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 behind you (laughs) I have an official pick on Toledo minus four and a half. I don't love the four and a half, but I think they are more than a touchdown better than Ball State. So official pick for me on Toledo. San Jose State at Western Michigan. This is a fun non-conference game here. Western Michigan is a three-point favorite. On to you, Jared. San Jose State has played two FBS games this season against FBS opponents, and the totals from those games have been 37 and 31. I think doing the math off of my head. So I official play for me, I'm taking the under 63 and a half. All right. Jack? Maybe the warm Michigan weather will heat things up a bit. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to respond to that one. <laughs> I have an official pick on Western Michigan minus three. I think they are four and a half points better. So a small delta between what I think and what Vegas thinks, but very important points knowing that uh, a field goal pushes uh, for me there. I think they win by four and a half on average. Miami of Ohio at Army. Army is an eight point favorite. Jared. I got nothing. All right, Jack. With the exception of Long Island, teams have run roughshod over Miami, Ohio. That's bad news if you're playing Army. Official pick, I'm going to go with Army. I like it. I am also on Army minus eight. The model says 11 and a half. Miami is, Miami of Ohio is very, very bad lay the points mm. don't don't bother the fact that it's only uh sorry that you're that you're having to lay eight not seven not a worry at all can, can i go for a bonus stat <laughs> all right what's your bonus stat? in that game miami versus long island long island gained about one rushing yard per minute of their possession <laughs> they held on to the ball for 35 minutes and had 37 rushing yards <laughs> that's not good it's also long island so oh. yeah I guess that means much. Like, I mean, they got blown out, but 
at least they had the ball. Louisiana is a 13 and a half point favorite at Georgia Southern on DJ. Uh, Louisiana got back on track last week with a big win against Ohio. Uh, official pick for me here, I am laying the 13 and a half points with Louisiana Lafayette. Jack? Big win over Ohio isn't a thing. Points wise, spread wise, big win. Uh, no play for me on this one. I do make Louisiana a 15 point favorite. So if I had to pick it, I am with Jared, but it is not an official play from me. Ohio at Northwestern. Northwestern is a 14 and a half point favorite. Jared. That's a lot of points with Northwestern. It's very true, Jack. Northwestern's depth chart currently lists their quarterback as any of the three we saw last week. <laughs> One of them will get the job done, and I'm hoping it's that guy. I'm putting my official pick on Northwestern because, you know, 10 years is not long enough to learn a lesson. <laughs> All right. Well, the model agrees with you. I have an official pick on Northwestern minus 14 and a half as well. As I mentioned with Army, don't let the hook throw you off. I have this as Northwestern by 20. Ohio is very, very bad. North Carolina is an 11 and a half point favorite versus Georgia Tech. This game is in Atlanta, but it's where the Falcons play. It is not at the Yellow Jackets home stadium. Jared, what do you got? So Georgia Tech allowed 22 points or scored 21 points, excuse me, against Northern Illinois the first week of the season. Then they probably gave up 50 something to Wyoming and gave up what 61 or something like that to Michigan this past week. Um, and Georgia Tech probably followed that up by not scoring an offensive touchdown against Clemson. So I think Georgia Tech's offense is really bad. There's no way they score enough points here. Uh, official pick for me, I'm laying the 11 and a half points with North Carolina. All right, Jack. I hope North Carolina does better than Clemson and just not sit on a one touchdown lead. Yeah. I don't think that'll be a problem with North Carolina's offense. This is a pass yeah. from me. I've got the number right at this spot. Uh, rare opportunity for you to buy Chick-fil-A at that stadium, given that there's a Saturday game. So <laughs> if you're in the Atlanta area, take advantage of that. Nice. Colorado, you didn't expect me to come up with a nugget like that, did you? Colorado State at Iowa. No. Iowa is a 23-point favorite. What do you got, Jared? Uh, not an official pick for me, but I usually hate laying that many points with Iowa in any circumstance, but I would wholeheartedly endorse doing it against Colorado State if somebody was, were so inclined. See, I, I, I was so inclined last week. It was the one thing I did right. It's true. I don't feel like playing with fire twice. <laughs> All right, that's understandable. Official model play for me, I am laying to 23 with Iowa. It worked last week. Colorado State is very bad. Iowa running out of chances to look dominant offensively. They didn't look great last week, so I think they still need to go out there and push the pedal. I have this as a 27.5 point win on average for Iowa, so I'm laying to 23 officially. Southern Miss at Alabama. This is the game I alluded to earlier. I talked about, I think Alabama was looking past Florida to Southern Miss. Alabama's a 44 and a half. That was a, favorite. That was a, even long, that was a long play. It was a long play. It was Jared. What you got for us? Well, I, I, I guess I'm probably going to cede the floor to the model here because that's the only way we're talking about this game is if the model's picking it. It's true. Jack. Yeah. Well, we sure as heck aren't watching it. No. Uh, yes, official model pick on Southern Miss. I make this only 36. Interesting nugget. Alabama coming off of Florida gets Ole Miss next week. This is a classic scene which mm. game. They have no reason to run up the score. 44 and a half points is too much based off what the model says. It's also based off too much just based off of thinking about the schedule. Mm. Alabama gets out of Dodge with a nice little 30 point win and we cover easily. Next, West Virginia at Oklahoma. Oklahoma is a 16 point favorite. Jared. That's a lot of points with how Oklahoma's played this year. It's true, Jack. That's a lot of points with how Oklahoma's been playing at home this year. Mm. Uh, I'm laying the points with Oklahoma. I think they are better <laughs> than we think they are based off what we've seen. Nebraska's defense is actually really good. 
I think Oklahoma wins this by three touchdowns. The model says 18 and a half. So we're getting some value only having to lay 16. West Virginia got lucky last week with a rivalry win against Virginia Tech. They will not get as lucky this week on the road. LSU at Mississippi State. LSU is a two and a half point favorite. Jared, what you got? Good luck to whoever would want to wager on this one. <laughs> Jack. Never before has it been so clear that we are relying on consistency from 18 to 22 year olds. Touche, given the way LSU has been up and down. LSU burned me last week. I'm going back to that well, though. I make this a pick on so official play for me. Mississippi State plus two and a half. I really would love the three. We're doing this early in the week. If a three pops up, I really like this play. I still think there's value. This is a complete toss-up game. LSU is not that much better than Mississippi State. UAB at Tulane. Tulane is a four-point favorite. Jared. First game back in New Orleans uh, for Tulane. They played their last home game uh, in Alabama due to the hurricane. Uh, I think UAB is good. I think Tulane's going to score way too many points. I don't think UAB is going to be able to keep up. So official play for me, I'm laying the four points with Tulane. All right, Jack. Calls back to some pre- other first time after hurricane games that happen in Louisiana. I'm staying away. <laughs> I am staying away as well. The model says three and a half. So no lean either way for me on this game. SMU at TCU. This is the battle for the iron skillet. TCU is a 10 point favorite. Jared. Point C. All right, Jack. What? <laughs> I need, I, I need, I need elaboration on that, Jared. I, I think there's going to be a lot of points in this game. Okay. At what point does the traffic in DFW get so bad that SMU has to take a plane back home? (laughs) On a Saturday, thankfully, never as someone who lives in the DFW area. I have an official pick on SMU plus 10. The model says this should only be seven and a half. TCU wins by seven SMU covers. Iowa State at Baylor. Iowa State is a seven point road favorite. Jared. I have no idea. Jack. I know what I want. I don't know if we'll get it. Uh, official model play for me, Baylor plus seven. My model makes this Baylor plus three. So that says that Iowa State is definitely a better team and on the road, but not by that much. Iowa State's underlying metrics, so-so. Baylor's underlying metrics, actually pretty good. Offensive line playing really well. A quarterback who looks pretty dang good. Surprisingly, I wasn't expecting big things from him so i think this is a close game yeah, Baylor plus seven is the can't start slow like they did last week nebraska at michigan state michigan state is a four and a half point favorite jared official play for me here i'm laying the four and a half points with michigan state i think nebraska's looked good on defense but i think michigan state is too well coached and i think they cover this one laying the four and a half here for me with michigan state all right jack Nothing from me. The model says Michigan State by six. It's not a big enough edge for me to play. So I lean to Michigan State, not an official pick. I like where your head's at, Jared, but that Nebraska defense is really good. So not a play for me at four and a half. The numbers is quite there for me to get on board. Georgia State at Auburn. Auburn jumped out to a 27 and a half point favorite that number has been climbing ever since it came out what do you got jared i am taking the over here i believe it's about 58 or so not quite sure what it is but i'm taking the over here auburn has shown this year that they'll run up the score against these lower level teams and georgia state plays extremely fast so there's gonna be a lot of points in this game all right jack how else are you going to differentiate yourself in the sec (laughs) It's a good point. It's a good point. I think I wrote down 57 for the over, but we'll confirm that later. It'll be in the spreadsheet, whatever the official number is. A pass for me, the model says 29 and a half. So my model likes where the money is coming in on Auburn, um, driving that number up. I just can't get behind it at this much. I need a bigger difference for it to be a play for me. So I'm passing on Georgia State Auburn. Buffalo is a 13 point favorite at Old Dominion. Jared? Professor, where is Old Dominion ranked in your rankings? 
Old Dominion is ranked 125th out of 130 teams. I am laying the 13 points with Buffalo here in official play for me. I like it, Jack. I feel like the guys who created the card game Dominion would stand a better chance against Buffalo. (laughs) (laughs) I don't think that's true, but I like the joke. Official play for me as well. Buffalo minus 13. The model makes this 15. Old Dominion is very bad. Don't watch this game, people. Just bet on it when you're running, walk away. North Texas at Louisiana Tech. Louisiana Tech is a 12-point favorite. Jared? North Texas looked so bad last week against UAB. I hope that this is competitive. Jack? What happened, La Tech? Just, just, just what happened? Yeah, they should be... were good for a while, I thought, and then well, they were well, and... This should... I'm not even talking that far back. This should be 2-1-1 oh. one, La Tech. <laughs> Oh, yeah, because yeah, the SM, uh, SMU, uh, yeah. Hail Mary. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that was a like, wild play. Yeah, the, the, it was not only a Hail Mary. The guy caught the ball, ran out of the end zone, ran back into the end zone. It's like, we, we don't care. <laughs> you can have your touchdown. You can have your touchdown twice. Official play for me, North Texas plus 12. My model makes a seven and a half. So mm-hmm. to your point, Jared, I do think it will be competitive. North Texas loses by seven, gets us at the window with plus 12. That wraps us up for the rapid fire one-liners, all the games that somebody likes, uh, but not a deep dive for us. And that shifts us to our last segment of the podcast. Rather than split it into two podcasts like we did the last two weeks, we're just going to add it on here. The After Dark segment. This is where I'd add some music if I was good at editing things right. Uh, we'll have to we'll have to work on that for future episodes. If you're a night owl who loves college football, this is the segment for you. Let's get right to it. There are six games. We don't have plays on a lot of these, but we're going to talk about them briefly. And there are a couple of plays to sprinkle in. The first one: South Florida at BYU. BYU is a 22 point favorite. Jared, kick us off here. South Florida is bad. I think BYU, we've established at this point, is pretty good. But I think there's got to be BYU coming off some sort of high from all of these wins uh, against Pac-12 teams. South Florida, again, not good. I think it might be easy for BYU to either, you know, come out sleepwalking or maybe just pull all the starters in the second half. Um, So, uh, again, I think BYU is great, but I just can't bring myself to lay that many points. Jack? Completely agree. Like, BYU now has a – stranglehold over the Pac-12 South. <laughs> They're a game and a half ahead of USC. You're going into a non-conference home game. What do you have to play for? <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I agree. It's also a pass from me. Slight lean to BYU if you're so inclined. The model says 24. That's just not a big enough edge for me to get behind. As the other guys have said, kind of took the words out of their mouth, BYU coming off of uh, these last couple of weeks, I don't really... I don't know if they're going to come out and play with a ton of fire. I just, I don't want to bank on that. This is an easy letdown spot here against a team that they should just, you know, walk all over. So model kind of likes it a little bit, but not an official play for me as the edge just isn't big enough. there, laying that many points. Um, despite as we all talked about how, how good BYU is. Speaking of the PAC 12 here, Colorado at Arizona state, Arizona state is a 14 point favorite cousin Jared. Man, talk about two teams that have just been brutal. Colorado doing nothing offensively. At least, you know, uh, two games ago, that was against Texas and m maybe, you know, a it's little bit. Excusable. Yeah, excusable. Uh, last week, I'll be honest with you, I can't remember who they played, but it was not Minnesota. Minnesota, yeah, absolutely nothing. Was that 30 to nothing, I yep. think? Um, so and with was... some of the injury, and injury uh, with Minnesota, they're uh, – Star running back, right? Or receiver, yep. whichever one yep. it was. Uh, yep. I, running back. Running back, right? I, I thought Color might hang in that game, make that interesting. That game was not mm-hmm. interesting. Oh, yeah. Wow. Big problems there. But the problem is, is Arizona State has been dysfunctional. Uh, we talked about them the first two weeks of the season coming out flat, not playing well. And then I think the BYU game kind of went exactly how we thought it would. Arizona State came out flat and got behind and couldn't come back like they've been doing the past few weeks. So this is a game I want no part of. Yeah. Easy winner last week for us, BYU on it against Arizona State there. Yep. I mean, given that, someone should take the under. It's I would. It's 44. That's really oh. low. For yeah. a college game. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I wow. trust trust me. I looked. Yeah, you looked, you wanted it. <laughs> yeah. Wow, yeah. That number. Uh, uh, anything else, Jake? 
no, no. please uh, move on a, please a fi- a official play for me i'm i'm taking the 14th colorado model says 12 and a half not a huge edge but enough to get behind like we talked about both these teams are garbage so you're getting two touchdowns why not um there might not be two touchdowns to just to there, divvy up yeah there might yeah. not especially in a low total game every point you can get means a whole lot more i don't like this if it gets under 14 so if you're listening to this and the line has dropped under 14 i don't like it there but i did lock in officially already on bet stanty plus 14 uh 28 14 seems like a very reasonable final outcome maybe something like uh you know 24 10 as well so lots of ways you can push there and of course it can be even more low scoring than that Colorado gets the win so uh, i like colorado plus 14 on that one oregon state at usc usc what in the world are they <laughs> i have no idea this week however they are 13 point favorites cousin jared what do you got yeah, too much uh, swinging back and forth there for me, even though I did call, I believe, that outcome, USC coming out on fire. I have zero faith that that'll continue on into the next week. Um, you know, Oregon State could win this game. I would not be surprised. USC could blow them out. I would not be surprised. Uh, if anything, I think I might lean the over, um, but this is – I'm not touching any part of this. That makes sense, Jack. This, this is USC's third actual conference game. BYU jokes aside, (laughs) no one else in the Pac-12 has played more than one conference game, and those who have played one played USC. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. I, it'll be interesting to see if that causes some kind of imbalance in these next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. It'll quickly vanish, of course, because USC is eventually going to play. Like I'm sure they got Notre Dame somewhere. Notre Dame usually is towards the end of their season, so yeah, it's an interesting point that that USC, the way they do some of their non-conference games. Um, having all these conference games so early on, a little bit of a disadvantage. You don't have quite that same runway to get things straightened out. Oh, no, uh, I'm sure that, that didn't come back to bite them at all, Stanford. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, also a pass from me, so I think all three of us are passing on this game. I have USC favored by 11 and a half, so if anything, it likes the points with their, with Oregon State, but not enough to actually play it. That's just the, the minorest of leans there kind of under the corollary of Colorado. I don't really know what to make of these teams, so why not take some value on the points? But not an official play for me, uh, especially with the new quarterback for USC. I want to see that one more week and let his data get into the model. If he lights it up again, that's going to really change the trajectory of USC's season, uh, I think. So a lot of question marks there for USC, just been a really weird team, so stay away from me as well. The one you've been waiting to hear about, New Mexico at UTEP. New Mexico getting one point. So basically a pick them game here. This is uh, definitely a game you do not want to watch. I don't oh, no, I strongly disagree. <laughs> I strongly disagree. I have some advice for the listeners. Right. Game kicks off at about 7 p.m. local time. Okay. Watch the game until sunset. Watch the high desert sunset, the, all the pretty colors on your HDTV. <laughs> Then turn off the TV and go to bed. I'm wondering if sunset like 7.05, because that would that would make perfect sense if it was. I don't know what sunset in El Paso will no, be on Saturday. Well, well, okay, if we're going with aesthetics, uh, UTEP is wearing Texas Western throwbacks. Um, so right. I think those those uniforms are going to look really sharp. Uh, so to, to follow that with Jack, watch the sunset, check out the sweet uniforms. 7.03. Seven, is it really 7.03? Yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Yes. Uh, the real question is, is this game going to be on television or is it going to be on like stadium network or some random thing that no one actually gets? Like usually the bottom of the barrel games don't get on TV and this is bottom of the barrel right here. I can, this is streaming somewhere, maybe on Facebook, you can but I can find guarantee it. you it's not on cable. Yeah, I would hope not. Um, official play for me, believe it or not, New Mexico. <sighs> I think, New Me- I think the wrong team's favored. I think New Mexico should be favored here. I have Utah. UTEP is really bad. Not a game to watch. Just a game that the model says there's a point discrepancy here that New Mexico is the side to be on. It's uh, on ESPN+. No, Plus. It's on ESPN+. Everything's on ESPN+. Plus, I should have known. <laughs> um, no, no deep insight from me on New Mexico, UTEP. No nuggets from the model other than the math says UTEP is much, much worse. I don't care that they're home. Uh, so take the point with New Mexico, money line, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It's basically a pick them anyway. New Mexico should be favored and should win this game, according to my math. Back to the Pac-12 to finish this off. We have two more Pac-12 games after dark. 
Cal at Washington. Washington is a seven and a half point favorite. Jared, you've been taking these Washington unders the last two weeks. What do you have for us here? Yeah, so uh, I would like to say same song, different verse, but it's kind of like different song, same verse kind of thing. I think. Sure. Um, yeah, so unfortunately not touching the under here because it's crazy low. It's like 44 or 45, something, something like that, which may still hit, but I just can't quite get myself to uh, get there. Cal's won this game outright the last time, two times that they've played. <laughs> I believe the scores were they 12 give... to 10 and 19-17, I believe. Yes, historically um, they have year. been Washington fits. Nice. Yeah, yeah. So I, anything above a touchdown, I was for sure taking. So uh, official play for me here, I'm taking the seven and a half points with Cal. I mean, how many points are going to be scored in this game? I think getting seven and a half points is going to be huge. Check. I eagerly await the professor's rebuttal. <laughs> yes, I am on Washington minus seven and a half. <laughs> I don't care that it's a hook. I make this Washington minus 13. Oh, wow. Did Washington get back on track last week with all those points? Honestly, I have no idea. I'm just yeah. pulling in the advanced metrics, how the, you know, the efficiency, things like that. There's nothing to be said for taste. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing to be said for taste. Um, yeah. I have Washington winning this by two touchdowns. So to me... I don't care that it's laying the hook. I know that Cal has given Washington fits in the past. Most of those players are not there anymore. Mm -hmm. Some of those coaches aren't there anymore. Some of the players that are still there aren't playing in those games. Or maybe if they were, they watched from the sideline and discussed how they lost to Cal and so now they'll be motivated. I don't know. I can spin the narrative either way on that one. But again, the math says Washington by 13. So I will lay seven and a half in a heartbeat against you on that one, Jared. And then our last one, Arizona at Oregon. Oregon, the only respectable team, it looks like, in the Pac-12. Yeah. Oregon is a 28-point favorite. What do you got, Jared? So, Professor, you recall the way back to, what was it, week two, when we talked about Arizona and how uh, their one shot of getting a win at the season was going to be San Diego State. Oh, excuse me. The one shot at win number two was against San Diego State. Yes, their Northern for sure Arizona win is. was the next week against Northern Arizona. Correct. Turns out we were wrong on both counts, and Arizona's probably not winning a game this season. Yeah. Um, I was I was shocked that this was only 28. Um, I wanted to jump all over it, but I don't know if anybody's really noticed, but Oregon hasn't really – They've been playing with their food outside of the Ohio State game. They have not seemed interested at all. Um, so I, I'm not touching it. I Personally, I think Oregon's going to roll easily. But, man, they've just been starting slow, so slow. I just can't bring myself to lay that many points. I wouldn't call Fresno food. But but they, they came out not playing well. I think what we saw in the Ohio State game, like, clearly – Oregon has like this another level that they're capable of going to. And they just kind of let Fresno hang around and put them away with three minutes left in the game. Easily lost that game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We had, I had Fresno State on that one. It was an easy winner back in week, uh, back with one. Jack, anything for you on that one? I, it's a lot of points. I, th this game's not going to be close, but is it going right. to be four touchdowns? I'm not sure. Yeah. Late uh, at night, pass. I, I, yeah, don't, don't watch. Yeah, a, a, a pass from as well. Uh, I've got Oregon as a 30-point favorite. Uh, I think the model – I think, I think Jared, your analysis of this game is exactly what the model is seeing. Hmm. Oregon got outgained yards per play against Fresno State. They got outgained yards per play against Ohio State despite winning that game. Hmm. The, the, the metrics don't love them. Um, they, they haven't – you know uh, – People are talking about, you know, will Oregon make the playoff already projecting all that stuff out, everything like that. They're not a dominant team. If they want to make the playoff, they need to become a dominant team, and they haven't done it yet. That doesn't mean they can't. doesn't mean they won't. They haven't done it yet. And the model sees that, and the model is not giving Oregon the credit that I think, you know, maybe the media is, the AP poll is, because of the fact that they beat Ohio State, which was a very impressive win. But if you play that game with those – metrics over again Oregon probably loses yeah. that game yep. you so have an entire season. yeah you have an entire Pac-12 schedule to make people forget that they beat Ohio State right and if they don't get their act together people will forget that yeah um but as we talked about Arizona is really really bad so like yeah. I said I think the model yeah. actually you know it doesn't take our thoughts into consideration but I think your breakdown of that journey is exactly what the model is saying is Oregon should destroy Arizona. Arizona is horrible, but you look at Oregon a little bit deeper and you say, 
they should, but they haven't really yeah. done that yeah. yet. So it's scary to lay that many points. Uh, yeah. If this was down in the 24 range, I lay that, but at 28 being so close to where the model makes it at 30, not a big enough edge for me to play. So I'm staying away from that game as well. And that's our six after dark games. We've covered a lot of games, almost every game on the slate today, one way or the other, which wraps us up for this episode of Picks with the Professor. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe, rate and review. We really appreciate that. And remember, you can eat your betting money, but please don't bet you're eating money.